In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a sequence of photos that you've taken with your GoPro's burst mode to make an action sequence like the one shown here. Uh, I'll be using Photoshop CS6. If you don't have Photoshop, you can actually go to adobe.com and get a free trial version that lasts for 30 days and it's fully functional. Or I've also got a tutorial using GIMP, which is a free photo editing software. So you can check that one out if you don't want to go into Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to set up your camera to shoot a burst sequence. When your camera is in burst mode, it actually takes a series of photos all with one click of the shutter button, which is this one. We can then use those photos to merge together into one photo and get the cool effect that I'm going to show you later in this tutorial. I'm using the Hero 3 Black Edition here, so if you're using the Silver or White Editions, the settings will be slightly different, but I'll give you some recommended settings when we get into the setup menu. So the first thing you do is push the front button to turn your camera on. And when the menu comes up, push the front button again to scroll through to the burst icon, which is this one. And you're going to see the settings here. Mine's set at 12 megapixels and 30 pictures over one second. I'm going to actually space that out a bit more and make it 30 pictures over two seconds, just because that's a little bit close together and a little quick for the sequence I'm going to shoot. So we do that by pressing the front button until you get to the wrench, push the top button to select, push the front button again till you get to the burst icon and it shows the setting there. Push the top button to select and push the front button to go down to 30 frames per two seconds or 30 frames per three seconds depending on what you're shooting. If you're using the silver edition you can shoot 10 photos over one second or 10 photos over two seconds and if you're using the white edition you can shoot three photos in one second. So push the top button to select and you'll see that it's changed and you can push the top button, you can hold it down and go back to exit out of the setup menu. So it'll shortcut out of there. And then when it's back in the main menu, it's in video mode. So push the front button to get back to burst mode. And now your camera is ready to shoot a sequence. I shot this sequence with my Hero 3 mounted on a small flexible tripod using the tripod mount and I shot it with 30 photos over 2 seconds for this sequence. And here's some tips for shooting in the burst mode. Once you've imported the pictures to the computer, you need to sort through the sequence that you're going to work with and pick out the photos you want to merge. So I've picked out 6 here, and I've actually picked out one extra that I'm not going to use, but I wanted to show you how to get rid of one in Photoshop if you've pulled in too many. So uh, these are the six photos. I put them in their own folder so when I open up Photoshop I'll know where to find them. The next step is to open up Photoshop. I'm using CS6. Okay, so the first step once we're in Photoshop is to go File and go down to Scripts and then go down to Load Files into Stack. This is going to load all the files on top of each other in one file. So I'm going to do Browse and they're on my desktop in a folder called Action Sequence Picks. I'm going to click on the first one and then hold down shift and click on the last one. It's going to import all those six photos. And now it's giving me the option to attempt to automatically align source layers. If you didn't use a tripod for your shot, click this and it'll line up the backgrounds of your images. If you use a tripod, you don't need to because it'll already be aligned. And then uh, click OK. And it's going to start importing those photos. Now that all the layers have been imported to this file, you can see there's one file here called Untitled 1, and each of our images has its own layer. So what we need to do now is actually create a layer mask for each of these layers that removes everything except for the subject. So the way we're going to do that is to create a layer mask, and to start a layer mask, you go down to this layer mask icon below the layer panel here, click on that, and you'll see a layer mask show up here. Now double click on that because we're going to change some of the properties of it. With the layer mask, the white actually reveals and black hides. So we want to invert it because right now it's all white so everything is revealed. If we click this button here to invert, it's going to turn black and our picture that we were working on disappeared. So what we want to do is go to density and scroll that down to somewhere about 70%, 75% so you can see the subject that we just blocked out. And now we want to use a tool to reveal the subject in that photo. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a paintbrush over here. Make sure the opacity is up to 100% and make sure the flow is at 100% and pick a brush that's I'm going to start with about 150 and make sure the hardness is at 100%. That's the edge of the brush so that makes it a clean edge. Then you can go over here and you can just click and paint over the subject. You don't want to go into the next photo which is right next to him so I'm going to just do that part of it there and then use command plus on a Mac or control plus on a PC and you can scroll with your mouse to go up and down and get in a little closer so you can see some detail. Now I've got all the big parts of him. What I'm going to want to do is reduce my brush size to get down and get some more detail. And I'm going to just have the top layer cover the one below him. So you can go a little bit outside of the line even and you can see then you can see some sky and we can go in and fix that using white after we do the initial layer mask here. So there's going to be a little outline around him go like that and get all of the subject. And now if we change this white here in the foreground on the left side, if we change that to black, you can click down here or you can type in six zeros, zero, 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 zero. And remember black hides what's on that layer mask. So now if we paint again, it's going to hide that little edge there. Now you can spend as much time as you want getting as detailed as you want. And if your subjects aren't overlapping this won't really matter but I, I wanted to show you what it looks like when they're overlapping because the GoPro shoots fast sequences so when you shoot a fast sequence your subjects can be close together of course it depends on the speed of which your subject is going to but in this one he was really close together so I just got that mask there so his foot is clear and the background of the second image is also showing and I'm gonna go right here to get the rest of his shorts. And now I see a part that I missed right there. So I'm gonna go in with the white, which is click on the corner there, or you can do one, two, three, four, five, six Fs. Um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be exact white, you can just go really close to the corner and it'll still work. So I'm just going to get that part of his leg right there. Okay, and then zoom out and turn the opacity, the density back up on the layer mask to 100%. Could use a little fine tuning there, but now I'm going to go on to the next layer and do a layer mask for this image here, which is the second one down. So I'm going to click on that layer and add a layer mask by going down to the layer mask icon here. And you'll see the layer mask showed up here. So double click on that again and the properties pane will show up and you can see that it's white so we're going to invert it again to make it black which is going to hide everything on that layer so you'll see that layer just disappeared now what we're looking at is actually the next photo we're going to see so what we want to do is take the density down to about 70 percent or somewhere where you can see it and we're just going to grab a brush over here we've got 47 which is a little small to start out with I'm going to go up to about 150 doesn't have to be exact, just just the size it looks like it'll get your subject out easily. And I'm just going to make sure it's on white for the foreground, which it is, and that's going to reveal. So then I'm just going to brush over him. You can go over the layer that's on top, but not the one underneath, because this one's underneath that layer. So watch, if you go here, it's not going to erase the layer on top. But if you go over this one, it's going to erase that layer. So, But we can get it back. You can just go like this, and now we'll choose black and a smaller brush. And we'll take our brush size down a little bit, right about there, and we'll clean this up. Just around the edges. You know, and really you want to make sure there's no blue in between, because that doesn't look good, but I'm going to just show you kind of quickly how to do it. You can really zoom in by doing Command Plus or Control Plus. Zoom into the detail and make sure you don't have any of the sky in the background in this shot of the sky. You can also use some other tools that once you explore a little bit, you'll learn which ones work well. 
The magnetic lasso one works really well. So you're going to get the detail back of the next layer down. And you can see that layer mask on the first layer was still had some blue on it. When you zoom in, you can see the detail. You can actually go back and adjust that layer whenever. That's a good thing about masking instead of erasing. Is you can actually click back on over here on the right side, click back on the mask above, and now we're working on that mask. So if we want to bring back that the detail out of that, we just can click here, make sure it's on black, and then we can get the blue out of there. So then just repeat that process with all of the layers. And when you're done with each layer, make sure the density is back up so you can see that layer clearly. And if you decide that one of the layers doesn't work, say it overlaps too much, um, you can just click on it and you can delete it by right clicking, delete layer, or you can click on it and click the trash can down here and it says delete layer. So you can pull in more images than you really need and you can sort them out as you're editing through. And now let's go to the finished product. So now you can see that I've added a layer mask to the remaining two layers. And you don't have to add one to the bottom layer because that's your base layer. Uh, if you turn that off, you can see what's left here, which is just the part that's been revealed from all the other layers. <clears throat> so the next thing I'd like to do is to make some color corrections. But before, before I do that, I re recommend saving your file. And I would just go File, Save As, and save it as... Um, whatever you want to call it, action sequence, and it, save it as a PSD and that way you can save the layers. If you need to go back and make any changes to the layer masks, you can still have that access. But now, I'm getting, now that I've got it saved as a PSD file, I'm going to do layer, flatten image, and that's going to make it all as one image. So now we can do our color corrections. Since GoPro is shooting JPEG, we can do the color corrections at the end. If we, if we were using raw files, we'd probably do them in the beginning. But uh, it doesn't matter because we're working with JPEGs here. So the first thing we're going to do is do lab color, which is a good way to adjust your image without oversaturating it, but getting more color out of it. So you go up to the top bar and go image, mode, and go down to lab color. It's not going to do anything until you go image, apply image. And it's going to might come up on your computer under multiply it when it first starts and it'll look all crazy colors. But make sure you change this blending down here to soft light. And it's going to be 100% at the opacity here. You want to tone it down a bit because the contrast looks really high there. So you could try 60. Uh, the blues are nice, but the contrast is pretty contrasty still. So maybe even try it down to 40. And that looks good, so we'll do OK. And then be sure to go back to, up to image mode and change it back to RGB color so that you can save it as a JPEG. Um, otherwise it won't give you the option when you go to save if you still have it under lab color. So go to RGB color, change it back. And then uh, I think we're going to adjust the image mode uh, adjustments. We'll do brightness contrast a little bit and see if that helps it out a little. So we'll slide the brightness up to 12. That looks good. Or 14 and maybe a little more contrast and brightness down just a tad and OK and the last thing to do is crop your image uh, there's a, little, a lot of extra space over here and we can tighten it up a little bit so we'll choose the crop icon over here and you can choose up here you can choose unconstrained or original ratio original ratio will keep it the same proportions as the original GoPro photo so you can do that and then drag the corners down to, to adjust the image. And you can crop it. I'm going to keep one of the palm trees here and some of the ocean over here. And once you're happy with your crop, you can also hold it down and move it around here. Um, but once you're happy with your crop, you can push enter and it'll crop your photo. And you can save it as a JPEG. So file, save as, and just select JPEG from here or TIFF if you plan on working on the colors more. It's less to, it won't lose quality as much. Um, go to JPEG and save your file and that's how you make your action sequence. Hope you enjoyed and have fun.